हेलो एंड वेलकम एवरीवन दिस इज रश्मि फ्रॉम प्रिंट शॉप बाय डिजाइन हेल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई होप यू गाइस आर डूइंग ग्रेट एंड स्टेइंग सेफ वेयर एवर यू आर जॉइनिंग अस फ्रॉम आई एम सो आई एम सो ग्लैड टू बी हियर टुडे एंड यू नो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट पेनमैनशिप विद पेंसिल एंड द गेस्ट दैट वी हैव टुडे विद अस इज कैरोलाइन थैंक यू सो मच कैरोलाइन फॉर जॉइनिंग अस थैंक यू फॉर हैविंग मी सो फन <laughs> I am pretty. I'm super excited. Usually, all these workshops are super fun to be at, and I'm 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 sure it is gonna be great. So, moving ahead, uh, today's event is brought to you by Design Hill, which is the world's leading creative marketplace that caters to the creative needs of businesses and individuals alike, who can source high quality designs and buy unique products created by independent artists through its print-on-demand marketplace, which is called Print Shop by Design Hill. you can buy 50 plus unique products created by thousands of uh, amazing artists on the platform moving ahead let me quickly introduce our speaker for today and then we'll uh, start with the workshop as well so we have caroline with us she is a graphic designer and a hand lettering artist and uh, she's running her own one women led design business she has over 5 years of working experience uh, to grow small business in florida She has been featured in the uh, Jane Fuller Sun. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, yeah, sure. And yes, and is a recipient of a National Gold Eddy Award and has been featured by brands like Stick Mule and Design Taxi. Thank you so much, uh, Caroline, for joining us. Would you like no to problem. say a quick hi to the audience? No problem. Yeah, I'm really excited for this workshop. Um, I haven't taught any more than fifty people, so there's over a hundred of y'all here, and I'm really excited to teach you guys some pencil lettering today. Wonderful! We are equally excited. So before we start, let's quickly look at what Print Shop is. Print Shop by Designer is all about, and then we'll be right back with the session. shop by design hill and now we are all set to start the session and i am looking forward to it uh, before before we start uh, just a quick announcement for everyone if you have any question you will see a question section on your screen so feel free to put your questions uh, there itself and we will definitely take up all your question during uh, uh, during the session and at the end of the session as well so with that caroline we are all set to start over to you Great. So this workshop is called Penmanship with a Pencil, and at home, all you guys will need is you can use a mechanical pencil, you can use a sketching pencil, but this is the pencil that I'm going to use to draw all the letter forms with you guys. And I have a pre-designed workbook that I used, but you guys can just use regular paper. Um, I believe you can download the workbook, right? Did we? Did we link that? I'm not sure. But yeah, we have the link. We have the okay. link, so we'll share with. Uh, we will share the link uh, of the work with workbook with everyone. Okay, great. Yeah. So I'm gonna flip through this workbook. So I'm gonna start with the basic styles of lettering with you guys. So in typography, that is the art of arranging type that is completely different from hand lettering and lettering. So typography is very much structural. So um, unlike lettering, which is more custom, it's more uniform and it's what you use when you're typing and when you're um, using fonts like, like Google Doc or Microsoft Word. And lettering is basically any form of written letters. So, you know, when you're writing by hand, that's lettering. When you're doing calligraphy, that's lettering. Um, and then calligraphy in itself is when you're writing with pen and ink. So if you see those fancy 
custom script letters that people will use. Um, that's basically calligraphy, the beautiful wedding style invitations and things like that. And then hand lettering is basically where you're drawing letters and creating custom um, typefaces by hand. So those are basically the five styles of lettering. So I'm gonna flip to the next page. Um, and then there's different pencil types that you can use. So you have your basic mechanical pencil, you know, easy peasy 50 cents from the dollar store. Um, this is great for quick sketching and it's the cheapest option available. It's what I always use for sketching lettering. Um, it's what I've always started with. And then you have a little bit fancier. This is from Faber-Castell. Um, this is a 2B pencil, and this is also great for sketching. Um, it's moderate in pricing, and it comes in different shades. And then there's also, like, drafting pencils. This one is from Tool. I believe this was about $2, but the lead quality is a lot better, so it's better for tight sketching. Um, and it's going to be the more, more expensive option because it's better quality lead. And so there's different pencil lead styles. Um, there's 6B, which is the softest, HB, which is kind of in the middle, and then 6H, which is the hardest lead. So usually I sketch pretty heavy. So I try and stick with an HB or a 2B, which usually most mechanical pencils are HB. This is 2B. So this is a little heavier. But depending on how heavy handed you are, I would pick the pencil lead that best suits how heavy handed you are. All right, so guidelines. So grids are very essential when it comes to lettering, hand lettering elements. Um, you wanna have a grid because when you're drawing and things like that, things can get crooked and things can get off, you know, the wrong angles when you're drawing like an A and there's no grid line, you can draw like all the way down here. So it's best to have grids when you're drawing because it's good for alignment. And there's different types. So you have slanted grid, um, where if you're drawing letters individually, like A and C, you can draw each letter in each part of the grid to get them nice and even. And cursive grid, what everybody learned in elementary school, you know, when you were writing your calligraphy and things like that, um, this is easy to see the letters on each line. Um, and then you have your basic square grid, which if you're making like block letters, like an H, it's really easy to get those lines tight and get your letters uniform when you're filling them in. And then your blank grid. So I usually use that because I'm more advanced than you guys are. You guys are beginners. Um, and so I can just draw on the line and place the letters um, in a better manner. And so there's different letter styles. So these are the most common, and these are the ones that a couple of them I'm going to be teaching you guys today, not all of them, but then you guys can do some more research if you like some of the letter styles and try building them out yourself after the workshop. So scripts are very personal. Um, it's what you use for greeting cards and like elegant designs, like beautiful um, scripts. Serifs are small lined, and they have little pieces at the end and those are called serifs. So if they're missing a serif, which is the little piece on the end, then that's called a sans serif. And so they don't have extending features. So these are the most simple and modern, um, most typefaces, like your keyboard is a sans serif. Um, and it's what, you know, Google is, different, different logos that they use nowadays. Um, most companies use sans serifs because it's easy to read. And then you have Western, which is less common. I don't know if you've ever seen old Western movies or old TV shows from the 60s. They use those fonts a lot. And those have um, oblong forms on the ends um, to make it more bulky and clunky. And then you have decorative, which is a little bit different from script because these are usually better for short headlines um, and bits of type, but not body copy. You usually do not use decorative font for body copy. Body copy is basically like a paragraph like you see here because it's hard to read if you're using this decorative part, but you would use a sans serif, which is what all of this is written. 
so there's for the different letter styles what we can do is we can kind of just ease into this get a little bit of practice so if you guys have a blank sheet of paper and a pencil just grab that really fast or if you wanted to download this workbook you can totally you know try it now or try it at home later um it's totally up to you but i'm going to practice a couple of these a's and then get into doing more of the different styles so for a sans serif a you always will start going up so you go up one down two and then across on three and you've successfully made your first letter um what you can also do is since you guys don't have guidelines on your paper if you're just using a blank sheet of paper or lined paper you can just quickly take a ruler or just draw across two lines across your page and so to make the a a little bit more detailed what you would do is this is called the skeleton so what you do is you take this you draw it and then to make it a little thicker you draw around the element so it's basically the same you have your one which is the square you have your two here and then you have your three which is across and so these are called the clothes so you have the skeleton then you have the clothes and then you fill it in so that's called your basic sketch and then that's your a so that's a sans serif a and then for a script if you had a brush pen which is more of a calligraphy pen there's these things called thick thin so the thinnest part is down here and the thickest part is up here well those brush pens will create that thick thin for you because pencils you know can't do that so for this sans serif a what you're going to do is you're going to go down and up and then you take your pencil off the page after each stroke and then you go down again just like that and then we're going to do the same thing like we did with the sans serif a you know we're going to go down and up and down and then we're going to draw interior just like that and fill it in just like that so you have a sans serif a and if you guys have any questions let me know i love questions um yeah i love questions yes everyone if you have questions feel free to put them in the questions tab Yeah, Caroline, okay. let's continue. So for the serif A, it's basically just like a sans serif, but you add the little pieces on the end. So you're gonna go up one, down two, and then across on three. And then you're gonna draw your interior piece. I want to know if anybody's left-handed because left-handed is very hard to draw sometimes because you're always dragging your arm across the page and then you get this black line on your hand afterwards and then we fill it in And so to add the serifs, the little end pieces, I'm just gonna draw the serifs over here. 
you just make these little triangular pieces like this. Just like that. And then you'd apply it to this letter. So you just draw these little ends to the A. Just like that. So if you eliminated the serifs, it would be a sans serif. You have the serifs, and then that's called a serif. So moving on to decorative. This one's probably my favorite because they're just so whimsical and fun, and you can do so much with them. So you're going to draw down and across. Oops. Caroline? Yes. Sorry to cut you off in between. Uh, the, the screen is a little bit blurred as the audience is seeing and uh, we will need to you know move up the paper uh, like move the paper a little bit up because i think i think they can't see the paper yeah yeah i have switched out my video because i'm facing some trouble with my electricity over here but i can see i can completely see the entire uh, workshop uh, and uh, i hope guys this is fine now is it better now? Perfect. Let's start. Okay. I didn't know what you guys can see. I didn't know yeah. if this was it or if you could see this entire paper because on my phone, I, you can see the whole thing. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll keep you notified about it. People can see it now. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. They can see it. Yeah. All right. So we're going to move on to the decorative A. So basically, you're going to do one down and across. And then two. And I always take my pencil off the paper after each stroke. And then three. And then four. To create that simple decorative A. And then we're going to add a little bit of thickness to the edges. So we're going to draw it again. pretend we drew it again and then we're going to add some thickness to the edges just like that. And if you wanted to take this a step further, if you had an outlining pen, like a black thin outlining pen, I'm trying to see, I have, I have some right here. If you had one like this, I got this on Amazon. This is called a Stabilo. You can outline on top of the letter and then take an eraser and erase to make like a nice thick, um, black outline letter but we're using a pencil right now to make it simple for you guys so last a you have the Western and you're gonna basically start you always start with kind of a sans serif letter so you have your one like we did two and three just like that and then we're going to add a little bit of a dimension to it so we're going to draw it again, and then we're going to do one. So we're making the sans serif A again, just like that. And then you add the thicker serifs on the ends. So like we did with this one, just make them a little bit thicker to make them more Western.
And then you have all this inside, so you just fill it all in. Just like that. So you guys have successfully done five simple letter style A's. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about letter building basics. Um, like I talked about with the letter styles. So this is called the skeleton. So this is what I did with the A. I did that basic outline. And you start by drawing a single line outline of each letter. And then you will be drawing block shapes around the lines of each letter. So, you know, you have that skeleton inside and then you're drawing around to make it a little bit thicker. And then you have the body, which is when you're shading inside of the letter and fill it in. And then we're gonna move up. So then you add the serifs like I did before. You shade those serifs. And then you have this thing called the clothes, which is like adding ornaments, like flourishes, which are these fun ends of letters like that or the shadows so you add shadows and to add even more dimension to your letters and decorations like leaves or flowers um and you always do that stuff at the end you want to start very simple you always want to start with these skeletons and work your way into the clothes so okay these are called typeface gestures so you have your basic sans serif and serif letters, but they also have these special pieces inside of them where they have different variations. So you have bold letters, you have light letters, you have condensed letters, and then you have extended letters. So a bold A would basically be an A like this, but it's a lot thicker. So to make it more bold, you would add a ton of thickness to that letter A. Just like that, and you would fill it in. And then to make an L that's light, you would make it very thin instead of it being thick. So you would draw just a little bit around the edge of the L. Just like that. A condensed D, so would be pushed together. So you have the wide and then you have condensed. So this bold face A would probably be very wide. And then you have a condensed letter. So for this condensed D, we're gonna draw it very thin and squished, and then we'll draw around it. Now I make this look easy because I'm doing it a while. So when you guys are doing this workbook, if it seems frustrating, it's totally fine because some of y'all might be doing this for the first time, but it's just honestly practic practice. And so I'm gonna fill this D in. I'm trying to see if anybody's asking me questions. We do have some questions. Would you like to take them up? Sure. Great. So let me put you in the bigger screen. All right. So Nimisha has asked the very first question when the webinar started. And the question is, uh, where, do, where, do, where do you find the website for setting up your own business? Where do I find I, the website for what? So I am a bit confused with the question, Nimesha. It would be great if you can elaborate on this question because it doesn't sound complete. 
the the uh, she has written that where do you find the website for setting up your own business oh like my personal website or just the website that's yeah i am also i am also confused hence nimisha it would be great if you can you know uh, elaborate this question further and we'll for for take it up let's let's move to the next question in the meantime uh, manonal has asked what kind of pencil can we use uh, so we can write like this so the pencil that i was using is the tool uh, i think you are on mute caroline you are on mute can you unmute yourself yeah perfect so i used the tool pencil and i got this in america the office depot so i don't know if they have that brand in other countries but honestly any kind of drafting pencil i think stadler s t a e d t l e r i believe is how you spell it um they have that i believe it's a couple dollars but drafting pencils are great i mean any mechanical pencils are great um yeah it doesn't have to be fancy literally you guys can use a mechanical pencil and achieve the same thing that i'm doing with these pencils wonderful uh moving ahead to the next question okay the question is uh christy is asking how did you find your own artistic style did you try a lot before you found your own yeah so there is a woman who i really look up to who's a hand lettering artist and her name is jessica hish um her last name is spelled j let's see h i s c h e is her name and she's amazing she's an amazing lettering artist she primarily focuses on vector lettering which is using adobe illustrator um but she starts the same process like i do where she uses a pencil and then she builds things out digitally but that's kind of who i've been taking inspiration from for years probably since 2013 and i didn't start professionally lettering until about 2017 2018 2017 was the year i started getting good clients um and i've kind of just been doing it since then so i primarily focus on letter or vector lettering that's what i do all right so i hope you guys are enjoying the session caroline has been sharing some great value bombs with us and has been you know sharing her tips and strategies and tips here so i am sure you guys are enjoying the session if you have more question feel free to put them in the question section and we will for sure take it up um all right before i move forward uh, i would just like to give a quick shout out to print shop by design hill for organizing this event Let's take a quick break and keep this interesting uh, conversation going on. Stay tuned. We will be right back to hear more from Caroline. I've always been creative and always been an artist. As a young girl, I used to paint rocks and I used to sell them for a quarter on the street. <laughs> and I just fell in love with it. It just grew into a passion of mine. I started looking on the web and I came across Design Hill and they had a design contest to design a logo and I entered it and and I won and I was like, "Oh, this is really great. I can pick and choose what type of logos or design projects I want to work on and it allows me to be creative keep my hands you know with my tools and and working so it's kind of nice it's really easy to use you can scroll through the projects and there's sections that you could go by it's really easy there is a few clients who have come back to use the one-on-one -on -one projects There's one client in particular, she owns a vintage shop and I designed her logo and she came back. She needed a design for a flyer and she really liked the illustrations that I did for her, so she came back a couple of times with projects. I would recommend it especially um if you're a designer that's starting out and you want to learn from other designers, seasoned designers. It's a place 
to keep in the game and keep using your tools. It makes me feel great and it kind of confirms that I should be doing this. And I love to see logos that I've designed out and proud of that. And I think that the clients are so happy that their logo represents what they do and you know makes them look good. It's a collaboration, it's good for me and it's definitely good for them. All right, we are back. So uh, keep your questions coming, put them in the questions tab. We will definitely take more questions uh, at the end of the session. And if you are enjoying this session, do not forget to take a picture of this. Tag Caroline, tag Crenshaw by Design Hill on your Instagram stories, and we would love to reshare the same. All right, let's let's uh, get started again. Caroline, over to you. You will have to unmute yourself. All right, I left off with the condensed D, and so we're gonna work on the extended E. So you're gonna take your pencil, and you're gonna draw one, two, just like that. So an extended E would be wider than a condensed D. So then I'm gonna draw inside, And then fill it in. Just like that. So you guys have successfully done four different typeface gestures. So I'm gonna flip to the next page and we're gonna practice some serif styles. So like I said before, serifs are pieces on the ends of letters that give them a unique shape. And there's also different types of serif styles. So like lettering, you thought, oh, it doesn't get better than this. Well, it gets better. So you have old style, which has got these curved edges. And then you have the slab, which is more rectangular. You have modern, which is a little bit thinner. And then you have your decorative, which is almost like a Western. So someone had asked about how to build out the serifs. This is how you build them out. So you start on the left by building, you can use this block grid, make this little shape like this. So you have one line this way, it kind of curves a little bit, goes down, comes across, and comes back up. So then you would mirror that on the other side. So you have a piece that comes down, across, and over, and then you would fill both of those pieces in. And then for a slab, you would draw a rectangle. And then you would fill that in. And then for modern, you make it a little bit thinner. So you draw a thinner serif on the end and fill it in. And then for decorative, it's almost like a mustache, a mustache serif. You have a piece that comes across, curves a little bit, and then comes down and up. And you mirror that. So you have the cross, down, and up. And you fill it in. Just 
Oopsie got that. So now, since we've kind of covered the serif styles, we're going to move into a couple of sans serif letters. I don't have enough time to do the full alphabet, but if a couple of you guys shouted out a couple of letters you want me to do, I can kind of just pick and choose. So quickly, a couple of people just type a couple letters you want me to do in the alphabet. M. We have the first one, M. Okay. All right, there's going to be a lot of people. So I'm going to probably start with. So we have M, G, K, and S. Let's go ahead with that, these four. All right, I'll do D first. So for D, basically this whole workbook has three alphabets in it. So for letter D, we're going to start with making a rounded circle. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then you're going to drop it down. So that's a basic D without an outline. So then to add the outline, like I did before, you draw that inner shadow piece around the edge of your line. Just like this. Fill it in. So let's see, let's do another one. G. The G. It's basically just like the D when you draw a circle around the edge. And then you draw the shadow around it. And like I said before, after each stroke, the stroke is where you're drawing and then you take your pencil to paper. So you fill it in afterwards. And then you end up with a nice way to do on the end. All right, another one. Okay. For K, I'm going to draw one line down and then draw another line up and then another line down. And then you draw around it. So basically, every letter is the same process where you draw a couple lines, and then if you want to leave it like that, you can leave it like that. But to make it a little bit thicker, you draw around the edge and fill it in. Let's see, M. Draw a line coming down. And then you have a, a little hump. Like that. Another one. Yep. Like I said, it's totally okay if it's messy because you're using a pencil and we all make mistakes. I mean, it's not going to be perfect. The reason why this looks so good is because I did it digitally, so I erased all the messiness. But honestly, that's not how it starts when you're drawing letters. It's okay to be messy. And you fill it up. Just like that. So now I'm going to go to S. So S, you can split it up. You can do like kind of a C, 
and then you can mirror it coming down. Like that. And then you can break it up. So you can kind of draw a line in it. And draw an outline on the edge. And then I'll do W. W. W is not that difficult somewhere. It's pretty, pretty easy. You just, it's basically two Bs. So you draw a little bit of an angle. And then you draw coming up. And then you basically copy that. So you draw another one coming down. Another one coming up. So that's your W. And then we'll fill it in. So I'll draw my block around the edge. Just like that. So there's also the uppercase. And you know, we just did the lowercase. So there's also the uppercase. So I'm going to do a couple letters from here. C. We didn't do C, so I'll do C. C is basically an O. You can draw an O if you want, a little circle, and then you can kind of cheat and just erase a little bit if you want to. Yeah. So you have your C, and then you'll draw the lines inside of it. And you can break it up in two pieces by drawing one in the middle. Just like that. And then we'll erase and fill it in. Try and push it a little bit closer. I don't know if that's any better. It's as close as I can get so you guys can see the whole. Yes, line. it's perfect. Okay. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try an H. We didn't do an H. So, one line coming down. Another one coming down, and then coming across. Easy peasy. And then you have your, you draw your edges. And then you fill it. What to okay. So you have one coming down, and then you have like a forty five degree angle coming up, and then a forty five degree angle coming down. So like that. And Draw around the edge. Just 
Deixa eu só. Vamos falar aí. Do, do, and thank you, Joyce L. I love teaching you guys lettering. So for N, how do you do N? We have one, one down, and then two, 45 degree angle, and then three, coming up. And then you can draw the edges, these little lines first if you want. Technically those would be serifs. So same process for each letter for sans serif. It's pretty simple. And I'm gonna do Z and then we'll move on to the next style. So Z. That's for last. One coming across. Two, one probably an angle. And then, you guys hear that? Is it making noises? Okay, it's making sure. And then you have. So that was kind of the outline of the sans serif alphabet. And so now I'm going to do serif. So serif's a little bit more difficult. You guys thought, oh, this has been easy. Well, guess what? It's a little bit more difficult as we go along. So for A, what I do is I kind of make a, feel free to shout out some letters too. I'm just kind of playing around with them. Um, a half circle and then come down. And then I'll draw a little bit. Coming down a little angle. And then I add this. This is called the, the tail of a letter. So you just add this little bit there and that's where the serif is. So the reason why it's called a serif is just because of that little piece in the end of the letter. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna draw inside. So I'll make a little circle here. And I'll draw inside of each letter. Basically just like the serif, or sorry, sans serif. You add that little piece to the ends of the letters. So. Can we do a quote? Yeah, at the very end, I'm gonna show you guys how to use guidelines to make words. Right now we're focusing on um, the letters. If that's how you guys start um, with lettering, you guys should master the letters before you start doing words. But it's totally okay if you want to jump into words. Let me see what other letters you guys want to do. G. G. So for G, the line can be here. 
and this little oval kind of loop. And then little piece coming down. Another oval loop. So it kind of looks like a pair of glasses turned on its side. And then you'll fill it in. Fill it in. And if you mess up, you can just erase it. There's nothing against erasing, erasing is totally fine. You have your G. And then we do M. <laughs> Since we are on uh, this topic right now, Christy is asking that uh, for serifs, do the edges always have to have a tail? Do they have to overlap? For serif letters, do the edges always have to have a tail? Oh, the edges don't always have to have a serif on the end. Um, you can draw them just simply like this K. Um, you don't have to add these outlines to it, but that's just showing you guys how to thicken the forms up to make them look like the actual typefaces that are like you see on Microsoft Word or something like that. So. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, let's continue. Let's see, let's do N. So I'm gonna start by Dropping it down, coming across, that, and then three, four, back. So you guys can leave it like this if you want when you're rolling letters and connecting them together. Um, you were to write a word, like you, you would do each of these letters and space them using kerning, and then you would thicken them all like this. So you'd write your all your whole word simply, and then you would start adding the thicker um, edges, and then once you're done with that, you would fill it all in. So right now I'm gonna add some thicker edges. So that I'm gonna fill in. That. And Flip to this page. And let's see. Let's do Q. Let's do Q. And we'll start with a circle. And then put the line coming down and cross. And then we'll pick it up. So we only got to do two alphabets, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go all the way to the back because this workbook has so much more in it. Um, I'm just going to show you guys real quick the word part. Okay, so creating good compositions. So good compositions have good contrast 
and that's basically the thicker forms to the thinner forms. You want to make sure that you have one form that's thick and one form that's thin. Um, has good hierarchy, which is the small to large ratio. You want to make sure that something is, you know, one part is a little bit smaller and one part is a little bit bigger. You want to make sure it's um, balanced. So everything follows the same line. And then you want to use one to two typeface styles. So um, you want to make sure that you're not using more than three um, styles like that. Because three is too many, too many for your eye to, to read. So I have these lines for you guys to follow. Um, and what you can do is you can use these special guidelines that I provided. And then you can kind of just draw words. Like you can say, hello, October, or something like that. So, hello. So this is a good composition because you're using two typefaces. The hierarchy is good because this word is a little bit smaller and there's emphasis on the word October. The hierarchy is also good. Um, it's balanced because I'm going to make this word October a little bit thicker. So the word hello is a little bit thinner, and the word October is a little bit thicker. We have, do we have another hour or is it until 10? Yeah, we are almost, uh, uh, like, we are almost there. Uh, so we'll, we'll, uh, we'll take five to 10 more minutes and then we'll wrap it up. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, there's also these fancy things you can put on the ends of your letters called flourishes or the ends of the words. And I wouldn't recommend doing these until you guys are comfortable doing full words. Um, I didn't start doing flourishes until probably two years into doing hand lettering because I just didn't know the placement of them, but I included it in the workbook for you guys so you guys could see where they um, are supposed to go. So usually they go tastefully on the ends of letters, words, or phrases. So. This H, for example, I wanted to add a flourish because it just naturally has that curvature. And there's different styles you can do. So you do one like this. That's one. Two. After you write the word is when you do a flourish. So we can pretend that I did the word flourishes. And then I wanted to add a flourish at the end of this R. And then a flourish at the end of this H and S. But you don't want to do too many because it takes away from the composition. You want to just do one or two. Um, like this L would probably be a good place to put one because it naturally is going up. So I would put a little piece on the end there. Like that. Just to add a little bit to it. And 
And I have a couple more options for you guys if you want to practice. And that's kind of it for the workbook. I did two out of three of the styles of lettering. There's also script, but that one you guys can practice if you want on your own. Yeah. All right. All right. So, 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 Caroline, uh, the, we are all done with the workbook, right? Now we can, can we take questions? Yeah, lots of questions. I love questions. All right. Uh, so, I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was so much of fun. I myself learned a lot, and I see the chat section. It's uh, so many of you are saying that the session is great and it's beautiful. Thank you so much. And it, it, the credit goes to Caroline for sure. You know, she has been putting so much of effort teaching us how to draw individual letters. So, thanks a lot, Caroline, for that. You're welcome. So, so we uh, we have limited time. So let's take uh, two more questions. We will not be able to take all the questions that I see in the questions tab. Uh, but I'm sure Caroline uh, would love to help you. Uh, you know, after the session, you can probably DM her on Instagram. Do follow her as well and DM her on Instagram, and uh, I'm sure she would love to help you there. So Caroline, uh, uh, one question from my end. I see. I think a lot of us, a lot of the audience uh, who have joined us today, uh, some of them would be beginners. So you talked about digitizing your artwork, right? So how do you go about that, and how do you sell uh, sell it off? Uh, just to give a perspective to the audience. How do I advertise and sell my artwork? How do you digitize your artwork, and how do you sell it? Okay. So I've been a graphic designer since 2015. And I went to business school, graduate school, at the University of Florida, go Gators. And that's where I learned to market and sell my business. So I started my business when I was in college. And I started doing things with the local community. I started going to networking events. I started going um, to events where my target audience was. So say I would go to a mixer and there'd be a bunch of other designers there. Um, I would go to the places where I wanted my artwork to be. So I focus a lot on hand lettering and custom signage and things like that. So I would basically just network with the local community and then network online, um, add people I follow on um, Instagram, pick their brain on things like that. Um, trying to think of what else. I started an Etsy and posted my work on there. Um, marketing through Instagram, Facebook pages, things like that. Just any free way that I could get my foot into um, like marketing my work to other designers and other lettering artists. And then I just make things. Like I always am doing illustrations and fun stuff um, and posting that onto Instagram. All right, that's great. Uh, so before we wrap up this entire session, any last piece of advice that you would like to share with everyone, those who are starting their journey in calligraphy, or those who have already started and you know uh, are uh, um, are on the in the verge of probably selling their artwork. So any last piece of advice, tips that you would like to share with everyone? I would just say make things every day, um, and post it even if it's really bad like show people your process of messing up and then making it better. Um, because that's what I'm noticing now that people really love is when you give them value. Um, I've started doing on my Instagram more teaching based things like uh, the reels that they started launching. Like that's a really big thing now that I feel like is taking off for people's creative careers and just teaching people things that you, you know. Um, people love like hearing from you and if you get to a point where you're like where I am and you really want to teach people like then do it that's kind of the basic thing and if you fail you fail just try again yeah wonderful all right everyone before I say bye to all uh, just just a quick announcement my team has shared uh, an offer for you uh, as a gesture of appreciation for joining us in this event so you can uh, you can you know check it in the chat section or uh, might you you can uh, keep your eyes in the chat and we'll share the offer again um, 
Also, uh, thank you so much once again for joining us. It was a pleasure having you. Although we could have covered a lot more in this session, but unfortunately, we have limited time. I hope you guys loved this session. Once again, I would love, uh, you know, like to thank Caroline for taking out your time and joining us. No problem. I really appreciate it, and this is great. I love this. Wonderful. All right, guys. This is not where it ends. We have a lot more, uh, you know, events lined up. For you guys so if you have not registered for any of the upcoming event you can visit designer.com slash events the link will be in the chat section and you can register for all our upcoming events there all 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 of you who are sort of asking for the recording of the session so you will receive the same as well right after the events end and you can also see the previous session on our youtube channel and on the designer page events page the link will be in the chat again you can also follow us on Instagram and Design Hill and on our and on our LinkedIn page uh, to stay tuned uh, for such events. Also, last but not the least, we have recently launched a DIY creative tool which is called Designer Studio. Be it a designer or a non-designer, everyone can create beautiful designs such as business collaterals, presentation, social media posts, and much more within few minutes. So you can check uh, Designer Studio as well uh, by going to designer.com slash studio. On that note, I would like to say goodbye to everyone. Thank you so much once again for joining us. You have, you guys have been a lovely, lovely audience. Thank you so much, Caroline, for putting in so much of efforts and sharing so much of knowledge and value with everyone. Really, really appreciate that. No problem. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Bye-bye.